Hey, it's Steve. In this video, we're going to unbox and take a look at the Explore Scientific Twilight One mount. Okay, so let's get the box open here. Um, this was drop shipped directly from Explore Scientific. And surprisingly, actually, I wasn't actually expecting this, but the mount does appear to be fully assembled as it comes right out of the package. You can see the, uh, the mount is packaged already, assembled, with the exception of the spreader bar which um, and the uh, slow motion controllers. But you can get that out of here. So all I'd love to do is put the spreader bar on and the slow motion control knobs. We'll do the slow motion control knobs first. Um, you get one long one and one short one. So there's just a, a simple thumb screw here. You can loosen that up, slide it on the, uh, the shaft of the slow motion control. And then screw this and hopefully get the spreader bar on there. Aha, this does come off. Yeah, I wasn't sure how I was gonna get this on there without taking the, uh, the bottom mark, but, but there is just a little bushing on here that does slide right off. And so that does allow you to put the uh, spreader bar on there. Slide this right back up. Oops, pushing first. And there is a little C clip or E clip in this other package here. And this is probably hard to see, but it's, it's basically a, kind of an E shaped uh, clip, and that fits, that clips onto the uh, bar here in here. This is just a retaining ring, and this just helps prevent the this bar or this shaft from falling out if you take the, the mount head off. There's a little groove on the shaft that it slides into. Um, you try these scissors here, you need something to kind of push it in there. There's not a lot of room for fingers. Okay, so that's on. Um, I think they've redesigned this plate a little bit, and so I think there's enough room now to where um, you can kind of more or less collapse the tripod pretty tightly for, for travel. Anyway, go ahead and get the uh, mount head back on. You have to line up the, the notch here with the post on the base. Okay, and so you can have this tightened and still collapse the legs pretty much completely um, for storage. And then if you want to tighten the spreader bar, you can just rotate that around. And there's, a, there's another knob here. You just spread upward and then you can tighten to get these legs spread out. And you can kind of pull them out a little bit farther as you get it tightened to maximize how tight you have the spreader bar. You really want to have it, um, you know, as stiff as possible to help minimize or help increase stability as much as possible so you don't have any of the legs moving. There's actually in mine a fair amount of play right here and so I'll have to kind of a, a slot there. Um, so for some reason something is not tightened with this part right here and so I'll have to figure out what's going on with that. Because that's obviously, this is not going to be acceptable for, for you. So let's just see what happens if I tighten these bolts up in here. There's also these uh, locks for controlling the amount of uh, tension in both axes. That may, in fact, be what's needed to help keep the, the slot down. Oh, there's still some slop in there. So now I'm just going to go ahead and take these bolts off here and see if there's something that can be done to possibly uh, tighten things up. Also with the uh, altitude axis, uh, if you have it tilted more than 45 degrees, this is going to run into the base, so I'm likely going to have to also um, adjust these bolts up here while I'm at it. So what I'll just do is rotate this 45 degrees and reattach. So that will solve that problem there. Now I can go almost vertical now before the control knob hits the, uh, the base of the mount. Okay again, the issue, the issue here is this play you see right there. So I'm going to take these bolts off from the bottom and see what can be done to address that. Okay, so there is a, a, a bolt here, or a, a nut that uh, 
looks like I should be able to tighten. I'm assuming that if I tighten that, that's going to, yeah, because there, there's some play right here in this washer. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, get my uh, socket wrench and go ahead and tighten that up. I'm not sure what this is going to be. It's not 3 8 Yep, 10 millimeters it is. So let's clamp that down. And, oh yeah, that totally does it. So yeah, very simple fix if you do have a sloppy uh, azimuth uh, axis on your twilight mount. Um, just take it apart, there's a bolt here, you tighten that up a little bit. You can obviously adjust how much you want. Um, don't want it too tight, because that's going to obviously restrict motion a little bit, but um, yeah, that's, that's pretty nice right now. There's no play at all. And that's a simple QC thing that, I, you know, it's a very simple fix. There's no reason that should have come out of the factory, um, factory like that. Okay, so now I just have to put the uh, rest of the mount back together. Uh, now I have seen online that there's been, uh, some people have found there's a stability improvement in terms of reduced vibration and such. If you rotate this uh, 45 degrees from how it comes uh, from the factory, um, so essentially you would have the slow motion control uh, not lined up um, parallel with the uh, um, bar here, or the, with the riser bar here on the mount. Um, because uh, there's a little, there's less support where the slow motion control is, and so if you have it lined up with the uh, the mount riser bar there, you can get some rocking motion as a result. But if you rotate it 45 degrees, that puts all the, the heavier weight on the uh, larger bearing surfaces inside the azimuth part of the of the mount, and so that may improve stability slightly. Probably won't make a very big difference, but um, you know if it can give you a slight increase in stability and reduced vibration, might as well go ahead and uh, make that small modification. And because I do have it rotated, I'm probably going to use the larger slow motion control arm on the, uh, the azimuth. To the tripod legs. Okay, so now we do have the mount uh, assembled once again. I did make the change to tighten up that bolt on the inside uh, of the mount base uh, that controlled that slot there in the azimuth uh, uh, rotation, and that has dramatically improved it. It's now really, really nice and smooth. Again, that's a, a simple QC thing that shouldn't have happened. Um, you know, it should not have come from the factory in that manner, although possibly just the shipping vibration may have loosened that, but, but simple to fix once you figure out, you know, how to do that. So if you do have a mount uh, like that, where it is kind of loose and sloppy, um, that's gonna give you a lot of vibration if you don't fix it <clears throat> when you're using it, um, but very simple to fix once you, uh, once you get to that bolt there. Okay, so overall the Twilight One mount from Explorer Scientific, I think, is a pretty good uh, you know, budget mount for what it is. Again, it did come with some quality control issues. I had to tighten up you know, a few different areas in there to get things from being really sloppy, but once I did that, it's really performed really well. I've had it outside a few times at night uh, for some observing sessions, and it really has been pretty stable. I haven't had a whole lot of vibration with it. Um, again, I am using it with a Celestron C6 though, so it's only, you know, you know, eight, nine pounds, maybe 10 pounds loaded up. And so it's not a huge amount of weight and it's short. And so there's not a large uh, moment arm there to, uh, to worry about for vibration. So it's very stable for this kind of scenario. And, uh, you know, it does give you reasonably good height. I'm over six feet tall, about six two. And so the eyepiece height is pretty decent for me. And it's worked out pretty well in that regard. And it's very portable. I can, I can easily carry this outside with one arm. You have the other arm free to open up doors, that kind of thing. So it works out really well for me. Uh, slow motion controls work out pretty nicely and I do enjoy using those. But uh, again, the key thing is if you do get this mount and uh, you do find it's kind of sloppy, you have a lot of vibration issues, it's not working out well, uh, take it apart, tighten everything up. I mean, I really cranked down the, uh, the lock nut here inside the uh, middle of the, the base here, and that dramatically improved, you know, the, the, the overall uh, 
um, you know, operations of it, it was, it went from being very sloppy to being really smooth. And so that made a big difference. Again, the tripod legs there, the, uh, the bolts there might be a little bit loose on you and you can tighten those up as well. And so there's a lot of areas here, you know, even on the, the, the side arm here, the bolts that are holding that on, um, those weren't as tight as they should have been. They weren't, you know, they weren't fully tight. And so that was also an issue. Um, so again, you know, this is not a high end mount. It doesn't cost a lot of money. But uh, for you know under $200, especially if you get it on sale, you can get it sometimes down to around 160 and use probably about $100. Um, it works really well. The slow motion controls work pretty nice. Um, and overall, I think this is really a nice mount to have if you have, again, a moderately weighted in length telescope that isn't gonna really stress it too much. Uh, it works really well. It's lightweight enough where you can carry it out easily in one arm. And so um, overall, I like it. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep using it. And so again, I do recommend it. Um, if you are willing to go through and make some of those adjustments on your end after you receive it, if you're buying this for a first time telescope user, who's not going to be able to easily, you know, make those adjustments on their end, they're kind of scared to maybe take it apart and, and do that kind of thing. Then you probably want to steer clear of it, go to something a little bit higher end, uh, you know, that, that might work out better for you. Um, but for the most part, this does work out really well, I think for, for most users who are at least, uh, you know, aren't that afraid to kind of take things apart fix things up, maybe regrease it if you need to, um, and uh, you know, and make it work out better for you. So, so anyway, uh, that's a look at the Twilight One mount from Explorer Scientific, and thanks for watching. Bye.